All right, cool. We are live on Facebook, so it is my great pleasure to introduce a friend of mine and a friend to uh, rail preservation, John Berkmeyer, um, who's also putting out a uh, book on the Susquehanna soon. Uh, is also you may have seen some of his photography online of the uh, Port Jervis Transportation History Center and Operation Toy Train and other events uh, throughout the area. Uh, so, without further ado, John, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Richie. Thank you for having me, everybody. Uh, welcome. Uh, yes, I uh, take a lot of photographs. My photographs are slightly different, though. Uh, as you can see, I have to share the screen first. That would be helpful. Okay, share. Boom. Uh, can that be seen, Richie? You can see my screen now? Yep, I can see it. Okay, cool. All right, so what we're going to talk about tonight are trains in the era of the flying camera. And by flying camera, I mean uncrewed air vehicles unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs or drones. Um, I have been flying drones for, whoops, wrong way. I've been flying drones for about seven years now. Wow, I look at that and realize that that's a long time. Um, I won a contest at the place I was working at the time and won enough money, put some money down on a really basic drone, uh, a Phantom 3, which was uh, kind of the drone, the, the standard drone at the time. Um, immediately started taking pictures of trains, which we'll see there um, in a few minutes. I've been FAA commercially licensed since 2018. That doesn't mean for two years I was flying illegally. It just means that commercially I can, I can work commercially now. The FAA has mandated that in the continuation of a business, you must be licensed. Even if I don't, even if money is in exchange, in exchange for my services, I cannot give these pictures away and say, hey, look, I just donated them. No, I have to actually be licensed. So I've been licensed 2018. Uh, I've been rail fanning since 1986. Uh, I was seven. Uh, the Susquehanna was being reactivated in the area. I live not far from there. Um, I fly under the name Argo Flight. We'll get that in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, that's me. Allegedly, I live at the uh, Newfoundland train station. I don't, but I thought that was kind of cool. That was one of the runner-ups for my book. Uh, I took another picture. My son took that picture. Uh, the picture that will actually be in the book is me on the platform of the caboose at Newfoundland and you'll see that next month and below that is my license um obvious things removed from it uh for privacy purposes so where I started from in 2015-2016 was right here I was one of these guys and I was very careful in selecting this photo because I didn't want to make fun of anybody I didn't want to insult anybody and I'm not this is not the purpose of that but this is 40 rail fans somewhere in Belgium waiting for one of the retiring locomotives. I have no idea about European trains, so I have no idea what they were waiting for. But sometime in the 90s, I saw it on Wikipedia. But that's where I started thinking about things. This is a problem to me. There are 40 people with exactly the same photo. Now, from 1910 to 1999, that probably wasn't an issue. People weren't sharing photos online. There was no such thing as mass internet, people weren't sharing photos like they do now, now they do. So you've got four, let's say this was 2016, you'd have 40 to 50 people with exactly the same picture, the same picture on Instagram, the same picture on Facebook, the same picture on Twitter, you name it, it would be there, everybody would see it and be like, oh yeah, I've seen that like 40 times. So I started thinking about it, how would I approach this? I'd be in the air, right here, right where my mouse is. I'd have a way better view. And again, I'm not knocking what these guys are doing. They probably took great photos, but they took 40 of the same photos. Not what I wanted to do. So, as I say, rail fanning has become a crowded two-dimensional field. The solution was underwater. Um, this is Argo, the sled right here. This is the sled that discovered Titanic. This is the man who built it, Robert Ballard. He's a personal hero of mine. Um, so I started thinking about it. Titanic was two and a half miles down. Nobody's ever been, no, at the time, nobody had ever been there. Nobody even knew where it was. How did they find it? They found it with a video camera. They dumped a video camera, Argo, overboard, overboard and towed it behind the ship for a week. Before that, there had been four expeditions to find the Titanic with sonar. Nobody found it. They drove right over the Titanic. Nobody knew it was there. They threw a camera overboard. They found it within a week. So that's where the name Argo Flight comes from. I named my drone, my one drone, in honor of this. And I just like the name. That's, whoops, that's Robert Ballard. 
uh, discover of the Titanic and the Bismarck. He found the Bismarck three years later using the same method. He threw Argo overboard and found it within like five days. So these are the drones I currently fly. Um, this right here to the left is Argo. This is the third iteration of Argo. Um, this is Calypso. I named both my drones after ships or vessels of exploration. Argo obviously was the camera slide I was just talking about. Uh, Calypso was Jacques Cousteau's ship. Uh, my son came up with that name. My son Andrew came up with that name, so I really like that. Um, these are the fourth. These are the fourth drones I've owned. Uh, this was drone three. This was drone four. Um, previously, I owned a Phantom Three and a Phantom Four. Um, love all of them, but these I love to death. These drones are awesome. Um, here's their specs, real quick. You know, they can shoot they can shoot 4K and 2.7K video. Um, uh, Argo can do 12 megapixel pictures and 48 megapixel super resolution. What that means is that nine photos can be taken and stitched together for one great big picture. Uh, the Air 2S is my newer drone. That's this one guy, this guy here, slightly smaller. Um, great still pictures at 20 megapixels. And that's what tonight's presentation is going to be, is just um, still pictures, because video does not transmit well over Zoom. High, high definition video does not transition well over Zoom. So these are the other two drones I fly. This is a Phantom 4. This may look familiar if anybody's been watching the coverage of the East Palestine, Ohio wreck, and a great example of what I'm going to get into tonight, um, being somewhere else telepresence being somewhere else. Um, they are flying this drone. The NTSB is flying this drone over the wreck of that, of that train. And uh, they are taking video with that to make sure that nothing else is on fire. And it's a great drone to do it with because you can't do it with a helicopter. A helicopter would down blast, would down wash everything and blow that smoke everywhere. And it's already bad enough out there. This beast is my company's drone. It's a uh, Matrice 300 RTK. It's a thermal imaging drone. The camera is not on it. I put the coffee cup there for perspective. This thing is huge. It's a flying tank. It's also worth $25,000. So when I fly it, I'm very nervous, but I do it because I can. Um, besides trains, I take pictures of abandoned barns. I love abandoned things. Abandoned things do not go anywhere. So this is a farm outside uh, about two miles south of Sparta Junction, actually at Farmstead. If you know where the Farmstead golf course is, that's where that is. This is Winding Brook Farms. Uh, not, there's actually a railroad connection to this. Um, get to it in a second. On the back of the property, there is that. That is a rail bridge for the Sussex branch that runs, that skirts the back of the property. I spotted that a couple months ago, uh, more than that, about a year ago. And I flew this last February, February, 2022. I haven't been up there in the last couple of months, but I spotted that. There's a couple of bridges. There's another one further up, but it's all uh, entwined in trees. I couldn't get that low to see it. I've also take pictures of ships with my camera that is inspired by another camera that takes pictures of ships. That's the United States, it's down in Philly. Uh, I went down there in January of 21. Uh, I wanted pictures of that. That's actually hanging in my living room. Uh, made a great picture. I love it to death. That's the back end, the stern end of the ship. Same trip, obviously. The New Jersey couldn't, you know, you couldn't go see, go to Philadelphia and not stop and see the New Jersey and Camden. That was a quick trip. Uh, my father loved that photo. It was a gift to him. And let's get on with what we're really here for, right? The trains. So we start out here. We're going to divide this up into three sections. It's going to be the Susquehanna. We're going to see most of Live action shots of trains. Um, then it's going to go over to the Lackawanna side where it's more abandoned stuff, the cutoff, things like that. Um, and then the Erie side, which will include Port Jervis, uh, the stuff I've done, some of the stuff I've done up in Port Jervis, and some abandoned stuff up on the Erie uh, as far as uh, as far west as Starucca. So this is, we're going to start here. And there's an important reason why I start here instead of further east. Um, east of Oakland, it becomes a little complicated with the air clearances and airspaces. You're getting closer to Newark, you're getting closer to Teterboro, and you got to be really, really careful. Uh, you can get clearances to fly in those areas, but it's a real pain to do it. And for the 10 minutes that you're there for trains, it's not really worth it. I do have some photos east of here, but not worth sharing. So that's the Oakland Bridge. Everybody knows where that is. That's been done. You know, lots of people have taken pictures here. This was a pop-up shot. I love this shot. This was done recently. This is one of my most recent train pictures. This is WS2, the day before the Toys for Tots train. I took the day off and I want to come down here 
to um, to do a test shot. What I was going to do, and I did do it, was I sent the drone down to Shiler Street. I was standing here Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon. I sent the drone down. I sent the drone from here all the way down to Shiler Street and watched the train come in. And I backed the drone up. I think it's like 2,600 feet. Um, I measured it with Google Earth. Um, I backed the drone up all the way on video. It's a cool look. And I happened to, I wanted to run it as a test the day before. So I happened to be setting up my drone and all of a sudden the, cross, the crossing gates came down. I was like, cool, let me get a shot. They ended up going to Pompton and I followed them to Pompton too. So that was kind of cool to see that. Uh, this was done. This is, I think, SJ1 uh, came down. It came down from Sparta to pick up stone cars. This was July of 2019. I'm sorry. Tw yeah, 2021. It's July 21. Uh, it's getting towards the evening here, and I grabbed Argo. It's got a really great low light sensor, and I would say this is about 8 o'clock at night. And because I'm commercially licensed, I'm allowed to fly after sunset. Uh, Non-commercially licensed pilots are not. It's one of the reasons, one of the other reasons why I got it. I wanted to be able to fly uh, in the evening hours. So I took advantage of that. And every now and then what I do with my drone photos is I do something fun with them. I take them and I will take something like most of the color out just to be a little artistic. I do this a couple of times in the presentation and there'll be double pictures of it. So you got that going to black and white and just the lights are there. Um, I, when I, the day after I took this picture, I came home and I, I was cleaning it up and editing it. And I said, you know, I should ask the crew to turn the lights off. And I'm like, no, this is kind of cool. I like this. So I left the lights on. This is the SU-99, uh, summer of 2019. That was a great summer. It was a summer I didn't work. I was unemployed, but I was able to do a lot of photography. So I was constantly chasing the 99. Uh, this is Butler Yard. Um, you're going to see this train a couple of times because we're going to go geographically west. Um, and this train was... This is going to be seen a couple of times, and I'll delineate which SU-99s are which. So it's done Butler Yard again. Um, this is when the yellow jet, uh, the SD-60s were still in town. And moving on. I love this shot. I love coming here. This is Charlottesburg Reservoir. I've done a bunch of shots here. This is one of the best shots I have. Um, I showed this to the marketing director of the Susquehanna, and he loved it. He lost his mind when he saw this picture. Absolutely loved it. Uh, different train. This was a daylight run, a pure daylight run of the 99. This is actually the 99 that started off the presentation uh, on the Oakland Bridge. This is the same train. Um, so I came here, and there's one more shot of this in the presentation as well. I've returned to this spot a couple of times. I'll park either back here on Echo Lake, by Echo Lake Road, where that car park is, or I'll park across the highway wait for traffic to clear and zip over. Um, I time it with the light down at Echo Lake Road and just zip over real quick. So that's that shot. And this was a couple of months later, uh, no, a couple of years later, like a year and a half. This was the Toys for Tots move uh, coming. They were bringing the stuff up to uh, storage up on, in Lackawaxen and they rearranged the power. So it looks like it's four units, but it's really not only two of them are online, the CSX units. And what's really funny, it might be hard to see, but if you see right here, it says T-O-Y-X, there were reporting marks that were put on the cars. We went down there and did the reporting marks and my son was with me at the time. And I think 21, 2021. So he would have been like 12. He would have been like 12 or 13. Um, so he was helping put reporting marks on while I was taking pictures of the cars for inspection purposes. So the next night after we were done, he said, we were watching a YouTube video of the train coming through and you saw this big T-O-Y-X on that. And he started laughing. I said, what's so funny? He said, I did that. And I said, why did you do that? He goes, so you could see it from space. So I went and looked at the photos and sure enough, you could see it from altitude. So, yeah. Uh, this is a series of photos. I launched a project of my own initiative. This is the Green Pond Y on New Green Pond Junction, which is now dead green pond junction so this was done in 21 i did all 12 months but i think i only have like six months here and i'll go through them real quick this is the why at various stages this is january 21 you can see there's a bit of ice on the on the on deer haven lake this is february i think february 6th if i remember right i have a weird way of remembering all the dates um this is we had had a small storm and the lake had frozen over i went back a week later and it had completely frozen over and we had a huge, we had a big storm. I think that was the big storm that year and it was completely frozen over. You couldn't see anything. Two weeks later, it looked like that again. 
We're getting into the spring. I think this is March. May. You can see it's really growing in now. It exploded between uh, March and May. This is in July. It's at full bloom. You can't even tell that there was rail anything railroad related there. That's why I love a drone, because you can get into these places. You can see things that other people can't see. Uh, September, late September, you can see fall starting to settle in. Whoops. I don't know what I just did there. That's October. That's my favorite shot of the series. Um, real fall color settling in. And finally, in this series of photos, December, uh, everything's died again, so we've come full circle. And again, it's it was simple to get to uh, with the drone. I was parked way up on Bigelow Road. Uh, I flew the drone down about 2,500 feet at about, I think, 260 feet. And that's the, the image you get for there. This, I love this. This is why I bought a drone. This is the fun stuff. Um, so I got word that 99 was coming through one night in the summer of 21. I think it's August. And um, I wanted a, a unique shot. I want something really interesting. So I said, why don't I just set it down on the S curves, send it down to the S curves uh, at, at Newfoundland. So I did. And I waited and I waited, I waited about six minutes, six, seven minutes, and here came the train. So that was my intention. I only wanted to get that shot. Then it hit me. I'm like, what if I got it at Newfoundland Station too? So that night, for the second time, chronologically, but not geographically, I raced the train with my flying camera and I won. Same train, a minute apart. From way down there to way up here. Um, I did it at the spur of the moment. I had no plans on doing it. I love this shot. I'm glad I did it. So I started out here and ended here. Here's how the shot played out. It's Google Earth. That was the first shot. I'm controlling the drone from here. That's where the first shot was taken. That's where the drone was parked. These pictures that I have all have uh, the GPS information stored in them. So I know exactly where, the, where these were shot. Um, that was shot here. Image two was shot here. That's a distance of 3,876 feet. So my drone flew almost a three quarters of a mile racing a train to get the second shot. I love that. That is cool to me. Moving on. Newfoundland Station, that was one of the days I took uh, one of the Y shots, I went over and took that because I just thought it looked really cool. This shot is done in Oak Ridge. I live about three quarters of a mile from this. I did not fly the drone from my apartment to here. I was actually parked right here on Bonta Road and I waited for the train. Um, this is one of my first daring, I would call it daring. Um, parked the drone about 150 feet off the deck, waited for the train. Um, and then as the train was just right after the shot was done, I zipped the, the drone straight up to prevent it being hit by the exhaust and flying, you know, maybe have, hitting unstable air. So that was a really cool shot. Shot that in March of 2019. This is the 99 we saw in Butler. Uh, I beat it up to uh, 23. There's a small pull off right past the traffic light there. And this is that rock cut on, t on, uh, on uh, 23. This was a cool one. This was a, a trip up to Sparta. They were going up to Sparta's WSX. Uh, a Saturday in June, I was coming back from the Military Transportation Association's uh, picnic. And I happened to be stopped at a crossing and here came the train. So I had the drone with me because I had done some work for the MTA that day at their picnic. And I followed it to Jorgensen's. Everybody's taking pictures of Jorgensen's. We've all been there. Um, but usually people don't like it when you are down here. They like you to be up on top of the hill. With the drone, I could be anywhere. Uh, I was on top of the hill, but I flew the drone down to the bottom of the hill to get that shot. That was a temporary thing the Susquehanna had going on. They were filling containers full of uh, lifting equipment or something for the army. They were filling the containers in Picatinny Arsenal and loading the containers in Sparta. We'll see this train one more time. Here's Toys for Fast Train again. This is right off Canisteer Road, another set of S curves uh, through a rock cut. I parked at Canisteer Road. Um, rode the flew the drone 
down between the medium, that's where 23 splits and you've got this huge medium in the middle, median in the middle. So I was able to fly without interfering, going over traffic. That was really cool. Got that shot. That was a really unique place. Um, you know, I've seen people with standing up here, taking pictures, mm, whatever. I wouldn't do it. I love this shot. This was the 99 from Oakland and the reservoir. Um, again, this is one of my artistic shots. I'll explain here in a minute. There's me right there sitting on the hood of my old car. Um, just beat the train up there. And again, everybody's taking pictures at Rich's Deli. I wanted something unique. And I think that's pretty unique. Again, one of the black and white shots, I love turning something into color. You know, we all know Susquehanna engines are really, really colorful. So I wanted to do a black and white against the yellow, yellow and black. I thought it looked really cool. So that's that shot again, being artistic. This is the uh, train we saw at Jorgensen's. It's coming on, coming around the curve at Sparta Junction. This is the inside of the curve. This is the best shot to get going west. Um, just flew it down there. Again, I showed this to the marketing manager uh, during the Toys for Tots train. He loved this shot. Um, ended up sending it to him because I might be, I may end up doing some work for the Susquehanna, which would be kind of cool. So yeah, this was here. This is the same train. They ran uh, units on both ends, I guess, so they didn't have to run Long Hood first going back east. So I just dropped the drone down. They were coming to a stop. I just dropped the drone down to a quick picture. Kind of liked it. This is another one. This is the first time my drone raced the train. And this is a really fun one. Uh, this was an SU-100 in, um, this was an SU-100 in May of 2019. Um, they came down really late. It was a daylight running SU-100. I parked at Demerest Road. Didn't know where they were. I suspected they were up here doing some work at the siding. So I sent the drone down there. Sure enough, they were. Uh, I got there just in time because they were wrapping up that work. And as soon as I got down there and took this photo, they started coming east. I turned the drone around and raced it. I don't have a chart for this one, but I will show you. Everybody should know pretty much have a, anybody who's chased the Susquehanna should have a pretty good idea of what I'm talking about here. I took that photo and I love this photo. This was done on the fly. I did not plan this shot. I love it. I think it was one of the most unique shots I've ever done. Um, so I came down from that straightaway, zipped across, cut the corner and took the picture here. I was down here, right? Like where the crossing is. So I raced the train. This is the first time I raced the train. So that was a lot of fun. Again, showed this to the Susquehanna. They showed some interest in it. So we'll see what happens there. They love that shot. I love that shot. At Sparta Junction, an overall view. A lot of Sparta Junction is inaccessible. Uh, I flew in from following the old Lehigh and Hudson River uh, from, a, from a small industrial complex about a quarter mile south of here. Flew in alongside the, the Susquehanna. Did an overview shot. Um, Eastern 2 right here. I'm running the cursor along. That's basically the alignment of the old main. You can see where it came in. And that clearing right there is where the old, main, old Susquehanna main was. So just a basic overview, you got Eastern here. I, that's uh, Susquehanna bulk systems, diversified, and I forget who that is, but they're all basically propane and weird chemicals. This is 3802, and I'm not sure which unit. Up in Port Jervis, this is the first Port Jervis shot, but not the last. Um, this was two, three years ago. They were doing PTC testing between here and Sparrowbush. The Susquehanna was, so they were parking power here over over the over a weekend. I went up there when Jimmy Wilson stuff was still there. I want to take some photos of it with the drone. Um, and I happened to see the yellow jackets way out in the back. And I was like, cool, let me go get photos. And I'm like, I can't go back there. And I'm like, wait, I have a flying camera. I'll do that. Sometimes I have to remind myself that I have the flying camera with me. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to go anywhere. Just take the pictures. So that's it for Susquehanna. We're moving on. Uh, Everybody should know where this is. This is Greendale Station on the Lackawanna cutoff. We're going to start here uh, on the cutoff. Everything from here on out is pretty much abandoned stuff. But I love, like I said, I love abandoned stuff. It doesn't go anywhere. This Greendale Tower, a um, couple hundred feet back. I know that there's a group uh, looking to restore Greendale Station. Um, I don't think the tower is on their agenda quite yet, but it should be within the next couple of years. So I took that photo summer of like 2020, I think. I love this shot because it's like the, the, the tower's hiding. Um, this was the fall of that year. A lot of times I'll go back to a place over the seasons and, and you'll see that coming up on the uh, cutoff. I go back to a place every now and then just to 
take pictures of it again just to see if there's any changes. And that's the same trip. I just got a little closer. That great hole in the ground is Roseville Tunnel. That is the east end of the tunnel. This was done in June of 21. This was the day I took a brand new drone and nearly wrecked it. Um, I'm standing there taking the photos. There's a park, there's a public park uh, right next to the, cut the tunnel. You wouldn't even know the tunnel was there. I flew the drone over, all of a sudden it started raining. So I had to get the drone back really fast. Uh, I flew it in sport mode, which is the fastest, mo the fastest way the drone can fly. Um, literally grabbed it out of the air and threw it in my car before, before the rain started coming down really hard. But got that. A couple days ago, or a couple weeks ago, excuse me, I was reading an article about how they started clearing trees on the cutoff. And I was like, okay, let me go take a look. And this is the same portal, uh, the east portal. I'm sorry, the west portal. Um, they've cleared a substantial number of trees here. You can see it here here and here. So they are working on the tunnel um, because I live so close to it. I live about 15 miles away. I'm gonna be coming back here. So there will be more photos of this uh, in the next couple of months. Um, probably not as close because there still is a lot of overgrowth there and I wanna get down that low. I spun the drone around. This is what's going on. They've cleared more. You can see more trees being cleared out here. Um, cleared down to this bridge. So yeah, and I'm back up in here. Like I said, there's a public park here. I'm standing somewhere in there. I didn't get many pictures. I have some pictures at the east end of the, uh, the, the, the other end of the portal, but because the mountain gets in the way, it interferes with the drone's transmission. So I like to drop it that low. Um, if the drone does disconnect from my controller, it will rise to a certain, to a predetermined altitude of about 350 feet and come back to me. And I will resume, I do resume control of it, but I don't like to even take the chance. So I can go down to the, to the other end. Paul and Skill Viaduct, one of my favorite places to come. I love coming here. Um, this was done in the height of the summer. I think this was the same day as the Roseville trip, the first Roseville trip. I did this, then Paul, I did Paul and Skill, then Roseville on the way home. Um, this is one of like hundreds of photos I have of this bridge from my drone. Um, I could do an entire presentation on this, but I won't. So this was done in the summer of 21. You could see, even though how big this bridge is, 115 feet tall, it's literally buried. You can't see it from the ground sometimes. That's in the winter. That's the cover photo that everybody's seen for the presentation. Um, I call this the Colossus in the Woods. I love coming here. Um, a lot of people have been up top and you know, trespassing, be that what it is. Um, a lot of people go up there. A lot of people have been up there. I've seen people up there while I've been up, while I've been down below taking video and pictures, whatever. I will never go up there for one reason and one reason alone. I'm afraid of heights, but I have been up there. I've taken photos from up there. I took photo, I took the drone, put it over the top of the bridge and took some photos. Um, and that's what the next series of photos are. Graffiti be, be what it is. I know everybody's got some opinions on graffiti, whatever. I thought some of this stuff was really good. So I took some pictures of it. Um, and a lot of it's rail inspired. So somebody's going up there and doing rail inspired graffiti. And they know they know their stuff. And I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. The Amtrak train going over the bridge. That's kind of fun. Just something really cool, not train related. But I thought it was, this is, you know, you can see the road down below. So you can see I'm, I'm way up there. I'm 120 feet off the ground. But my feet are on the ground. So this one I love. This was a birthday gift to Rudy Garbley. Hi, Rudy. I know you're watching. Um, I love this one. And this one has changed over the years. I've been monitoring it. Somebody really knew their stuff. Um, and I took this picture. That would be a really great idea for his birthday. I took it in June. His birthday's in August. Gave it to him. But it's been changed since then. I've been back there. And I've compared it. This was taken about a year later, about a year, year and a half later. You could see it's been changed. Somebody has altered it. Maybe the original artist. I don't know. But I'll go back and I'll go back one more time. You can see it. I see the report Conrail, copyright 1984 and all that stuff is all gone. I don't know why. But that's what it looks like now. I think that's the last one up there that I took pictures of. I like that. Like I said, somebody knew their stuff. This is the Delaware River Viaduct. There's not as much going on on this bridge. 
I took this from the Pennsylvania side right over here. That's the PA side. What's really cool about coming to this bridge and flying a drone over it is if you take off from the Pennsylvania side, you're actually higher than the bridge. So when you get down to look at the bridge, like I did in the next shot, you're actually registering negative numbers. So for all intent and purposes, the drone thinks I crashed. Um, but I think I was pulling about negative 10 feet uh, on this one. Whoops, I went backwards, sorry. And right there. So there's some kind of pipe, some kind of conduit or pipe running across the bridge. I'm not sure if that's for drainage or not. That's facing Pennsylvania. It, it as you know, it comes off the bridge and makes a sharp turn. Um, you gotta be really careful flying in this area. There is a national park here. Uh, and I, where the Susquehannas abutments are, I've never gotten pictures of those because that is a federal park and you're not allowed to fly drones in a federal park. Here you're okay. Um, sorry, once again, I did that. Uh, here you're okay. About a mile south of this, you're not. You have to be very careful. I have apps that tell me where I can and can't fly and I always check them. This was the uh, retirement run of John Sabaka uh, on HO2 in March of 2019. Uh, this is Port Murray. I've been here a couple of times. I've taken a lot of pictures of this for Toys for Tots. Um, you can see a bunch of people down here taking their photos. That's cool. Um, I'm right there. And I think he had stopped here. And I had a little fun with this photo. I took everybody out of it right here. I want to see if I could do it. And I did. And for whatever reason, I repaired the roof. I have no idea. I felt bad that the roof was all torn up. So I just cloned part of the roof and made it a new roof. I thought it looked cool. And that's one nice thing about drone photographs. You can do this with them. They are very forgiving for removing things, for fixing things, because you've, you're at a different angle, you're further away. A lot of these photos have had people removed. I'll show you a couple in Port Jervis where I literally, I removed an entire cell phone tower, um, but I'll show you that in a few minutes. Get that out of the way. This was in Washington Yard, again, standing with a bunch of photographers. I quick zipped the drone out, got that, got out. Um, this actually, I believe this image or one very, very similar to it in that series, uh, made it into rail pace the following month. That was cool to see that published. This was taken obviously from the air. Um, at this point, John has pulled into the yard. They coupled up to this locomotive and went west to Phillipsburg, uh, to meet some NS officials. So everybody's in the yard. Fun story. I'm standing right there. I'm taking this photo or a series of photos in the yard. All of a sudden, I hear a helicopter, like really close, like one of those Vietnam movies where you hear boop, 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 boop. And I'm like, something's close. And the rules are the FAA has mandated that all UAVs, drones, have to get out of the way. They are the lower priority. Priority is given to a manned aircraft. So what I think happened was it was a state trooper helicopter. And I think what happened was he saw a bunch of people in the yard and wanted to see what was going on. So he came hovering into the yard. I dove the drone out of the way. I was willing to crash it into the woods if I had to to get out of the way. But everybody was fine. Nobody got hurt. And life went on. So that's in Washington Yard. This is BASF on the inside of the yard. I took that this year. This was done for modeling purposes. I model. Uh, I. I play a train simulator and I want to model a couple of businesses, a couple of big industries. And I've actually modeled this from my photographs. I have this and a couple other photos from BASF um, in Washington uh, for modeling purposes. And I did model this. I have this whole industry laid out in virtual trains. Um, this was during the Toys for Tots run. Once I did the crowd shots, um, I flew the drone about a quarter mile away, take a couple shots and brought it back. This is Nova Borealis in uh, Rockport on the Washington Secondary. I love this place. It has the most unusual track arrangement. I love taking photos of this. I took this again uh, the morning of the Toys for Toss train, waiting for the train to get ready to roll. So I took this real quick. I have modeled this in trains using my photographs. I have several sets of photographs that I've taken from uh, Nova. And I've modeled this in trains as well. Although instead of a, like a plastics company, I turned it into a paper company. So I thought that was kind of cool. I have this track arrangement. I, I measured it out, did it all. It looks really cool. All right, we're coming up towards the end of the run on uh, Lackawanna. This is Tunkiak Viaduct or Nicholson Viaduct. This thing is huge. I went here in 2020. Uh, me and my son took a, a day trip out here 
in Staraka and Susquehanna to see some stuff. And I always wanted to come see this bridge. I heard stories about how huge it is and it's massive. It took my breath away. So when we pulled into, there's a small park on the one side. When we pulled in there, there were three guys getting out of their car. Guy comes up to me, sees me setting up my drone. He says to me, he goes, how do you get on the bridge? I'm like, what? He goes, how do you get on the bridge? We want to go up on the bridge. I said, that's a bad idea. I said, if train comes along, you got nowhere to go. I said, also illegal. He goes, oh, we're going to try anyway. So he cl they climbed somewhere up this embankment and got on the bridge. I never saw them again. I flew the drone. I was here for 20 minutes. I flew the drone around. I never saw them again. So whatever they did, they did. Um, so that's that. I love this because it looks like I'm landing. It's a landing approach. What I love about this shot is this, this bridge is longer than two Nimitz class aircraft carriers. So it looks like I'm coming in for a landing. I love that. So that's the top of the bridge. You can see the one single track. And there I am on top of it without going on top of it. If a train comes along, I just got to lift off. I just got to go straight up and I'm fine. Or left or right and I'm out of the way. That's looking one way. I forget which direction this is. North, south, east, west, pick a direction. Because that's the opposite direction. Looking the opposite way. That's my uncle in 1972. My uncle, in 19, my uncle Charlie, who some of you may have known, uh, passed away in 2017. He was an avid rail photographer. Um, he told me one time, he said, Jonathan, take a picture of everything. You don't know when it's going to be gone. So that's what I've done with my drones. I've taken a picture of almost everything. Um, but that's him. That's him. He climbed up there. Uh, the man had no fear of heights. I don't know where he got from because I know my father's afraid of heights and I'm afraid of heights. Um, so I would never go up there. So 50, about 50 years apart, but I didn't have to go up there. So moving on. Ah, now we're on the Erie side. Port Jervis, uh, we're going to see a couple of photos from Port Jervis. Again, this is more of my artistic side and the very forgiving side of drone photography. Um, this is the turntable frame. I lifted the drone up. Um, and this is the, 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 one of the things I love about drones. One of the frequent questions I get is how far, how fast, and how high? I've never thought in those terms. I've thought of where can I go and what can I see and how can, you know, how can I make it easy? So I did that instead of setting up a ladder, I did that color, black and white colorized it, colorized the symbols. Did it on the other side too, thought that was really cool. So if it ever gets restored, the, if these ever get repainted, it's pretty much what they're gonna look like minus the rust. View from top kind of reminds me of the logo for the Port Jervis Transportation History Center. I call this one Circles in the Snow. Um, anybody who knows me knows I'm a huge Belinda Carlisle fan, and I don't care if anybody knows that. Uh, so I was inspired by her song Circles in the Sand, Circles in the Snow. Um, you can see some of the equipment down there, two engines, a couple of the boxcars and stuff. This is, I came up here with my son. My son, Andrew, is now 17, and he's a very busy young man. So he hasn't had a chance to be up there yet. At the, by this point, he hadn't had a chance to go up here yet. So I took him up one day. Nothing was going on. Nobody was there. So the lighting was what I thought was perfect. So I sent the drone out to uh, take a picture of the uh, 44 tonner. And drones are great for that. You can send them out and do a whole bunch of inspection shots. What if we had a whole line of locomotives? Boom, 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 boom. I could take pictures of them standing in the front of the yard. No big deal. Um, sometime later this month, I'm going to go back up there. This engine is slated for restoration. Everybody's seen the 44 tonner project. I'm going to take some really, really detailed photos of this, of this, uh, engine with the drone. And I'm going to take them, you know, whole three sixties up top. I'm going to get in really close. Nobody has to get on a ladder, no nothing. Um, and there'll just be a series of photos. Matter of fact, Rudy had contacted me, I don't know, he texted me about four or five months ago when we were working. Um, we were having um, having some issues with one of the boxcars. He wanted to see if I had any photos of the um, roof. So he didn't have to send anybody up top. I'm like, yeah, hold on a minute. I went to my Google Drive, found it, sent it to him. Boom, we didn't have to send anybody up on the roof. People were safe. Um, we were able to just take pictures. This is the uh, uh, RS3. I like these nose shots out of getting as close as possible. The drone has a proximity sensor that goes off once it starts detecting something within 50 feet. And the drone controller was screaming at me at that day, but you know, came out unscathed. 
I love the sunshot sunset shots. Anybody remembers the grand opening of the um anybody remembers the grand opening of Port Jervis Transportation History Center? The first day was really, really rainy, but at about 4:30, the skies cleared and we had a gorgeous sunset. I ran and grabbed the drone. I was spending the weekend up there in the yard uh, on one of the cars, grabbed my drone, started taking pictures. Um, a whole series of sunset pictures. I love these shots. The twins at sunset. That's what I call this. Um, and remember I said I removed a, um, a cell phone tower right here. There's this huge cell phone tower right here. And I'm like, I hate it. So I used uh, my photo editor. I use a program called GIMP. And I removed, I used artificial intelligence to remove the cell phone tower. It's right here. If you know what you're looking for, it's right there. There's a tiny little seam that you can't see. Overview of the yard. You can see how much stuff we've got in there. Um, again, it's sunset. This was, this was taken within 10 minutes of each other. I think it took 15 minutes to take all these photos. That's up against the mountain. This was the first time, officially, the first time that uh, equipment that we came home. I call this shot homecoming. Um, we had backed the train into the yard and there's the crowd. That was our first time there. The turntable's already been used. I just thought it was a cool shot. I call it coming home. Ah, now we're into Susquehanna, Pennsylvania. I took this shot and there's another shot for comparison from a different time. This is where the shops were at one time. I took this in September of 21. That was taken at some point in the past. I think this was taken in the 1960s. Um, I got this from the Library of Congress, um, but you can see the differences. Boom. Not much is left. Basically the water tower, that's it. Here's the depot. See, there's some restoration work underway, stuff like that. They're working on the building. This is the water tower. There is some signs of the Erie still there, um, but not much. Anybody tell? Anybody know what that is? It's nearby. Um, this is that. It's your coal tower in Susquehanna. I've known that this tower has existed for a long time. I've seen a lot of pictures of it, but I've never been able, I've never been able to get up there. And I, and I looked at it, I looked at it on a satellite picture and I found it, but I didn't want to go to it. I didn't want to walk up to it. Active railroad, all that stuff. The woods, I didn't want to run into anything in the woods. So what I did in July of 2020, I came to this racetrack. There's a racetrack right here. And they had just done races, demolition derbies the night before. And I, um, showed up and the guy, they were cleaning up and they said, yeah, yeah, go do whatever you want. So I did, took some pictures, wasn't really happy with them. So these are from my second trip in September of 21. I came back and this time the owner was like, eh, I really can't let you on, but I'll make you a deal. I said, what's the deal? He goes, if you take pictures, uh, pictures and video of my racetrack, I'll let you on the property. I said, no big deal. Give me your email address. So I did it for him. Um, and then did this shot and that shot. And I love the condition of this sign. It's actually in really good condition. I think it's metal, but it's in really good condition. There's the tower from, uh, I think this is the Southeast. This was about 11, 30, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Tower from looking, looking from the East, looking to the East, but from the West. Lighting wasn't great, but I thought it kind of looked a little dramatic. There's another further away shot. You can see the racetrack in the background. I'm somewhere back there. There's inside the tower. I used uh, my one drone Argo has a zoom lens so I could park it further away and zoom with a four times optical zoom. That's inside the tower. I can get any closer. Um, I would never try to fly one in there. Be kind of cool though. There's the base of the tower. Uh, again, I'm still over by the racetrack. There's, I'm not there. Um, so I took some photos uh, of underneath. I did not fly the drone underneath. I was tempted to do it with a video. I did not want this proximity sensors going off and it freezing up 
and not going and not moving, then I'd have to go get it. Staraka during the realignment in 21, you can see guys up there uh, realigning the track. They they center they centered it. There's Staraka from track side from the track level. Uh, 2020, this is the one trip I was mentioning when I was up there uh, for the Cold Tower pictures for the first time. And I got up there uh, with the drone again. And that is basically it. I'm just going to wrap it up here. So if I have interested you in drones, which was not my purpose, just I just wanted to show my art. Um, if I have interested you in my drones, the pros are you get really unique and cool videos. Um, no one gets in your way. There's no more, hey, you're in my way for my shots which means you have far more shot options. You can remote, re reach remote areas like the coal tower without going to the coal tower. And it is just so cool. I love doing it. Um, sometimes I'll pop on music, my earbuds, my car, I'll blast some music while I'm standing next to my car. And I just love it. I'm in a world all my own. Cons, uh, there are cons, there are downsides to it. This thing has a high, these things have a higher weather sensitivity. Um, with a DSLR, you can wrap it in a plastic bag, stick the lens out of the bag, and take your photos. I've done that. Everybody's done that. Um, very time sensitive in the sense of battery. You have about 31 minutes. Uh, I know Calypso has got a battery time of about 31 minutes. Um, I don't like to be down lower than 15% on my batteries. So I get home. So my drones can come home. Um, so you gotta be very careful with that. You cannot just show up somewhere and expect the drone to take off and get to the location within the time frame of the train coming. So you have to be much more sensitive. You have to plan out your shots. So you have to time your, if you're chasing a train, you have to be much further along. You have to widen out your, your stops. Um, Pop-up flight restrictions, tell you a quick story. Uh, the last summer when 611 was in, in Pennsylvania, I went out there with my dad, brought the drone out with me. Dummy me forgot to check my flight restrictions before I left uh, with the drone. And I checked on my way out there, I checked the restrictions and the president was in Delaware. And they had slapped this massive TFR of about 100 miles around Wilmington. And the, the railroad museum out there came within one mile of the edge, and I couldn't do it. I was so upset. So I never got a chance to go out there and do it. Steam is the one thing I still haven't shot yet, and I want to. Um, and this one in red, and it's in red for a reason, um, must, must, must. This is a huge pet peeve of mine. You must be commercially licensed in order to sell photography. Sell, donate, contribute, anything, photography. I don't know about volunteer groups, that's a different beast, but the FAA has declared in the continuation of a business, which is actually very smart for them. They will say, you cannot say, hey, I donate these to Joe Schmo Roofing. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. Lastly, you're gonna draw a lot of attention to yourself, whether you want it or not. I get a lot of people come up to me and they ask me this standard questions, how far, how fast, you know, how long you've been flying, blah, blah, blah. Cool, whatever. The thing sounds like 10,000 bees. There is no stealth approach. Um, you will be heard. You will be seen. I know sometimes real photographers don't like that, but if you're going to do it, that's what it is. So that was the presentation. Thank you for your time. If you guys have any questions, I can stick around for a few minutes and answer them. Richie, it's all yours. Cool. Thank you, John. Um, that was some great stuff. Um, I really appreciate you coming out. Uh, doing this for us thank you i had fun cool um we had a question from lloyd uh what is the range of your drones uh i'm guessing distance yes uh range is determined by a number of factors one is geography probably geology too um and where you what's around you um dji the manufacturer of all my drones uh claims like a six mile radius six mile six mile range I've never gone more than 4,000 feet because in today's world, there are so many signals, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 5G, 4G, all of that. Um, and they, as you get further and further away, it will interfere. Now, some places are better than others. Um, but typically in this area, if I'm going to say, if I'm going to give you a range, I would say probably about four or 5,000 feet. Cool. Anything else? Um, a lot of wonderful uh, comments. People oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Photography. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I guess. Uh, I guess the question for me is, what is what has been your favorite trip or subject to photograph? 
well, like I said, I love a lot of abandoned things. My sister and I, uh, she's actually a professional photographer. Uh, very big, She's up and coming in the punk scene, but she also in her spare time takes pictures of abandoned things in terms of, um, she lives in Queens. So her abandoned things are more industrial. Mine are more rural. I love barns. Like I said, I love barns. I have hundreds of pictures. If trains are the most photo, trains or train infrastructure is the most photograph thing I do, uh, barns and abandoned structures like that are the next biggest thing. I, I love them. I could take, I have my favorite spots I go to every year, every, every couple of months I go to. Cool. Um, you know, people saying that say, say they ought to fund. Uh, I appreciate that. Show. I appreciate that. Thank you, everybody. I, I really do appreciate that. Cool. Um, I don't see any more questions in the chat. Oh, um, when's your book coming out? Uh, uh, my book Not is coming out. Photography, but I'm no, no, fan. there are drone photos in it, but oh, most of, a couple only. Um, and that's actually, uh, I took a couple as for the about the author page. Um, and then I actually did incorporate some drone photos into the book as a comparison for North Hawthorne, very similar to the Susquehanna, the Susquehanna PA shots, um, the Susquehanna PA shots that I did. Um, I did them. I did that in North Hawthorne to show how much stuff is actually changed from the old rail yard there, the old car shops there. And that's going to be in the book towards the middle of the book. That was really, that was a, that was a last minute idea that I had, I put in the book. So yeah, March 5th, by the way, March 5th uh, at, at Mother Seton. So stop by Rudy Garbley's table, Garbley Publishing, and I'll say hi to you. I'm sure Rudy appreciates the plug. Oh, always. <laughs> These plugs are my plugs tonight because, you know, yeah, exactly. we'll be selling the book at the table. Come get it. Um, do you have a website? I do, argoflight.com. It's not heavily updated. I am also starting a, I have started a uh, Instagram for those of you on Instagram, uh, it is droned by Argo. I think it's droned by Argo. I should actually know this, but let me let me check real quick, um, and I will answer that question momentarily. Uh, Argo the drone, A R G O, the drone is my Instagram. I'm starting to put stuff up there. Um, and I'll put more stuff up as I go along. All right, cool. Um... Someone asked, what do you have to do to get licensed? Okay, to get your 107 license, you have to, you don't have to take an online course, but I would recommend it. I did in past. Um, I got it in 2018. Um, and you have to be relicensed every two years. So what I would do is I would Google part 107 courses. I forget the one I took, but it was really good. It was a couple hours. It's all video based, proceed at your own pace. Um, and then I don't know since COVID what they've done in terms, I know what they've done with the retesting. With the retesting, you have to, you can take the retest at home online. The initial test is very tightly controlled, and they actually monitor you. So you have to get in touch with a flight school. If you live in New Jersey, in northern New Jersey, I think it's Essex County Airport. I took it at Essex County Airport. So yeah, if you just Google it, the FAA website, it's actually surprisingly very helpful for that. All right, cool. Um... Have you ever shot any pictures of the rebuilt part of the cutoff? I'm guessing that section of track out of Port Morris with all the uh, Alps. Yes, it, yes and no. I have done it. Um, I about a year ago, I think there was a there was an article about the engines that are stored there, and yeah. they had drone photos, and I was like, cool, I want my own. So I went and did it. That's a weird place to fly. Um, I'm leery about flying near that yard. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of radio interference there. Um, and I took pictures on the cutoff, uh, immediately on the cutoff, and then just got out of there. But yeah, no, I have. But between that and Roseville Tunnel, there's not a lot that I, I'm, that's the least familiar part of the cutoff for me. So I, I don't have a lot up there. Okay. Cool. Um, this isn't really uh, drone photography related, but maybe knowledge based. Uh, do you know if BASF in Washington still uses rail? Yes. I believe that just started again. Cool. There weren't cars in time, but I was talking to somebody uh, at the Chesapeake and Delaware on that trip. And they're like, oh, yeah, BSF's going to get cars. I'm like, okay. Right. So, yes, um, I believe they are. Someone asked if you consider doing a wall calendar. I have. I have considered a lot of options. And the one thing I'm considering, and I wish I knew a book publisher, maybe I'll have to find one. I'd like to do it, I, 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 some kind of form of a then and now book. Um, 
you know, like, as, for example, that Susquehanna and what it looked like with all the car shop stuff and now without all the car shop stuff, things like that. Yeah, you should feel called out, Rudy. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, I, I have considered some options. I and maybe this year I will. I, I think this is probably something I should do. Cool. Um, well, the question queue is empty. Um, but uh, thank you, John. Thank you. I really you. appreciate it again. Um, that was really interesting and a, a different perspective on photography. Um, I think I think we all appreciate um, seeing stuff in a different light, different angle. Yes. I would like to say something. Okay. Alex, I don't know who you are. I don't know what I did to you. I'm not going to apologize for something I didn't do. But my photos are not doctored. I do edit them. I edit them with GIMP. Uh, which is poor man's Photoshop. And um, if you'd like to take this offline, please contact me. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, John. All right, cool. Um, so for everyone who's online, our next meeting again will be March 9th. Uh, we'll have both in-person and virtual options. Uh, it's going to be Steve Barry's photography of 2022. So it should be a, a good, uh, good buffet of uh, rail fan photography from last year. Um, if you're willing, looking to come in person, attendance is free. Um, all are welcome. We'll be at the Arenas Auditorium at St. Elizabeth University. Um, directions are available on our website at tristaterail.org forward slash meetings. Uh, and as always, all of our, our shows are also available on Zoom um, if you can't attend in person. So thank you and good night, everybody.